Formula One, the world's greatest motorsport competition. In its near 70 year history, there have been moments that have had us on the edge of our seats. But for me, my favorite moment is on the horizon. My name is Fraser McKenzie, otherwise known as Kenzie Retro, and over the next 10 weeks, as we build up to the first race of the new season, I count down my favorite Formula One moments of all time. Just what will be the best moment I've ever experienced? Well, to do that, I've had to research, I've had to head down memory lane, I've watched some classic races, and paid attention over the last few seasons. And now, we are here. 10 weeks to count down the best. Pole positions, last lap heartbreak, championship deciders, climaxing with my top 10 Formula One races of all time. Now, sit back, start your engines as I count down my top 100 Formula One moments. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kenzie Ragshaw, and welcome to the first of my top 10s, counting down my top 100 Formula One moments of all time. With 2019 being the 70th year that the Formula One World Championship is taking place, and next year marking the 70th anniversary of when the sport first came to be, I thought what better time to celebrate this than by counting down my favourite moments in history. Now to do this, I had to do some research, pick out the best moments, watch some classic races, and in, in the case of some of the more recent races, paid extra attention to detail, which I'm most ready to do. I'm a very analytical guy. But nevertheless, let's get started with my top 100 in the one moment of all time with top 10 race starts. Now, for the race start, to be eligible for this list, well, obviously it had to be the start of the race. It had to have something about it that stood out, be it a race start crash, drama at the start, and just overall excitement. And I managed to pick out the 10 best. So, without further ado, let's start counting down the top 10 race starts of all time. But before that, I have a quick honourable mention, as I will do with all of these lists. Each top 10 is going to have an honourable mention before I start. So, here's the first of the honourable mentions. The 2018 Russian Grand Prix. Not a good day at the office for the Red Bull team in qualifying. Max Verstappen at the back of the grid with various penalties. But this is where the magic of Max Verstappen comes into play. One of the youngest racers on the grid, youngest ever to win a race, and just overall huge potential to maybe be world champion one day. That remains to be seen. But in the meantime, the start, it wasn't just the first lap. It was the first few laps that really stood out for me as far as how amazing a driver for Max Verstappen is. Yes, he can be hot tempered, but this shows how good Max Verstappen is as a future Formula One world champion without a doubt. 21 years old, got plenty of time before potentially getting to the promised land of being a world champion. But anyway, back to Russia. And back at the grid, and at one point, he was even at the front. And for that reason, that's why he got driver of the day. And not just that, it's just missed out on being in the top 10. Why? Because his charge through the field took place over several laps rather than actually the start itself. 
Now, don't get me wrong, the start itself was fantastic. But because of copyright reasons, I can't show the footage. But nevertheless, on to the top 10. Now, there's no better feeling for a Formula One fan than the start of a new season. And this list begins that countdown towards that new season. Australia is traditionally the starting place for the opening race of the season, and it has been since 1996. But in 2002, what better way to start the season than with a bang and a crash? The 2002 Australian Grand Prix. Amazingly, Rubens Barrichello on pole position rather than the dominant Michael Schumacher. But this is just the start of it. Ralph Schumacher, not too far behind. James Allen's commentary throughout this opening section was incredible. Now, I was just approaching seven years old at the time the first race of the season began. I was just, again, I was just turning seven in April, the opening race in March, and absolute carnage and chaos. Ralph Schumacher crashing into the back of Rubens Barrichello, and what more needs to be said, that was the catalyst of a huge eight car pileup which saw even Jensen Button out of the race. Safety car had to be brought out, and no wonder, with eight cars being out of the race, yeah, good luck cleaning up that mess in a hurry. And like I, and like I said, what better way to start this list and the season with a bang and a crash. And for those who want to know what else happened throughout the race, Schumacher, as always, at the, at the top. Michael Schumacher, to be exact, because Ralph was already out of the race. Thankfully, none of the drivers that were involved in the first corner incidents were hurt. The cars? Not so much. But anyway, after that, Michael Schumacher going on to win. A newcomer... Mark Webber from Minardi holding off Mika Salo, who was in his last season in Formula 1 at the time, driving for the new Toyota team. From there, it just took off. Mark Webber's career started with a points finish on home turf. And the Minardi boys were allowed to celebrate on the podium because of such an amazing achievement. Mika Salo settling for sixth place. And while that is a fantastic moment to remember, as far as this list is concerned, this race will definitely be remembered for that huge first corner accident. Now, talking of race crashes, number nine, and we fast forward a year later and towards the midpoint of the season. We were approaching the climax and beggar's belief. I remember watching this race at my grandparents' house. The 2003 German Grand Prix. The Williams locking out the front row. Montoya on pole, Ralph Schumacher second. Then you had the Ferraris with Barrichello, amazingly, ahead of Schumacher. Hold on. Yep. Then from there, ooh, goody gumdrops. It's when you see first corner incidents that you think this is going to be a great race because you never know who's going to get knocked out. And in this case, 
Kenny Reichman in only his third season in the sport ended up with another DNF at Germany cursed in Germany by not being able to finish at Hockenheim but that wouldn't be the only Germany track that he wouldn't finish at throughout his career but we'll get into that in a future list Reichenin out and amazingly Ralf Schumacher one of the four championship competitors alongside Reichenin Michael Schumacher Juan Pablo Montoya Ralph Schumacher and Kimi Raikkonen. All out of the race. Well, Ralph and Raikkonen, both out of the race. Safety car brought out, again. But not just that. Ralph Schumacher wasn't able to continue because of a cooling issue. So he had to bring the car in. They couldn't repair the damage. And Raikkonen had inadvertently caused Ralph Schumacher to go out of the race. So we lost two of the four championship competitors on the first lap. And what happened with Michael Schumacher? Well, his qualifying performance wasn't so good. But his race, at that point, he ended up not being able to finish that highly. Now yes he finished in the points because in the 2003 season a new point system was initiated. 8 for 2nd place, 6 for 3rd. Michael Schumacher only finished 7th, gaining 2 points. Juan Pablo Montoya ended up winning the race that day, only his 2nd race win of the season after his win in Monaco which kept him in the hunt for the title. Another German Grand Prix this time, but not at Hockenheim, but at the Nürburgring. 2007 to be exact, Lewis Hamilton's debut season, shock and surprise, another first corner incident. Now, what happened here? Race started dry, but wet weather was to be expected. Huge downpour at the start. Marcus Winkelhock for the Spiker team on wet tyres, only driver to do so. And he started from the pit lane. Ferraris led into the first corner. Alonso in third. Lewis Hamilton, 10th in qualifying, ended up in 6th, but then a collision with the two BMWs caused Hamilton to have a puncture, causing him to go all the way to the back of the pack. And during that first lap, it did indeed start to rain. And, my goodness me, it ended up being so wet that a number of drivers ended up losing control, many of them pitting at the end of the first lap. Raikkonen attempting to pit, but lost grip and went wide. Therefore ending up having to do an extra lap on the dry tyres, which a very good combination. Dropping him all the way to 7th place and Marcus Winkelhock found himself in the lead of the race because of his brave gamble to go on to the wet weather tyres. And also at the start with Lewis Hamilton he ended up keeping his engine running and managed to get himself back into the race. 
thanks to the help of a crate. It would be the it would only be the second time it would only be the first of two races that season that Lewis Hamilton would not finish in the points. But that chaotic race start, the brave weather wet, the brave wet weather gamble from Marcus Winklehawk. It may have been his only race, but what a moment to be at the front. Going back to 2003 now and only the second race of the season, the 2003 Malaysian Grand Prix. Jacques Villeneuve and Cristiano de Mata stalling on the grid on the formation lap. And then Fisichella ended up in the wrong position on the grid, causing him to end up having to reverse, which I'll also get into later in the list. It wouldn't be the only time he would end up with that. Another chaotic start. Michael Schumacher in third, heading into the first sequence of corners, collides with Trulli, and one Pablo Montoya, losing his rear wing, having to come back in to the pits, replace it, and ended up a lap and a half down. Trulli managed to escape mostly unscathed, but on that day, it was the McLarens that would be dominant, minus Coulthard who ended up having to retire through a mechanical issue. Kimi Raikkonen with his first race win of his career, ending up taking what would soon be the lead in the championship after that race. After his brilliant third place in Australia two weeks beforehand, this race win propelled him to the top of the championship leaving the two McLarens at the top, not just in the Drivers' Championship, but also in the Constructors' Championship. Now I mentioned Fisichella's reversing in our previous entry, but he also ended up doing it in this list, twice once in 2003, and then at the same race in 2001. Heinz Harald Frensen slowed during the parade lap due to a computer hardware error. And there was concern he would fail to make the start. Fisichella ended up buying Frensen some time when he lined up on the incorrect side of the grid and ended up reversing into his correct grid position, causing the start to be aborted. Causing the Jordan and the Benetton to end up taking the restart. But oh boy, before the lights even went out, there was more drama. One Pablo Montoya, his Williams broke down, and ended up forcing him to take the spare car, and his original car just would not start. All that aside, Michael Schumacher starting from pole position, ended up winning the race with a Ferrari 1-2, Rubens Barrichello in second, David Coulthard in third. So this race start was dramatic because the race hadn't even properly started yet. It all happened during the aborted start 
and the parade lap. And that's what makes this stand out, because it's one of the more unique race start moments. From drama to excitement, the crash is out of the way, and we're just going for electrifying starts. Now, I mentioned in the honourable mentions with Max Verstappen's incredible start at the Russian Grand Prix last year. But the Renaults were the dominant package. They were the dominant package throughout the 2005 season, going on to win the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship. And in this race, they ended up pulling off an electrifying start. Button and Michael Schumacher, slow starts for them, allowing the Renaults to take full advantage. Fisichella and Alonso, one and two, heading into the first corner. And while the Renaults would unfortunately not finish on the podium, It did mean that Kimi Raikkonen would end up going on to win the race with Michael Schumacher in second and Rubens Barrichello in third. Now this won't be the only moment from North America that features on this, on this uh, top 100 countdown because there was a very controversial moment in the following race which I'll get into in a future video. Now, it was inevitable we were going to get the great Ayrton Senna on this list. So, which of his races are we going to look at today? Well, none more so when it comes to race starts than the 1993 European Grand Prix at Donington Park. One of the rare occasions where we would have two races in the UK in the same season. Williams cars, one and two in qualifying, ahead of Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher, Senna, Bettinger, and Mario Andretti's son, Michael Andretti. Prost on pole position, a wet start, but those that have seen Ayrton Senna's races know how good he is in the wet. And the 1984 Monaco Grand Prix, his first season in the sport, a wet Monaco track, showed just how good he was in the wet. Nine years later, he would prove that once again. In a far inferior McLaren at the time, Williams were the dominant package, but when it rains, watch out for Senna. Dropping down to fifth position on the first lap, and then down to sixth. Senna then getting past Bettinger. Senna then getting past Schumacher, putting him into third, then gets past Damon Hill, and then into the hairpin, his great rival, the great Alain Prost, goes through into the lead at the hairpin, and Senna goes on to win by almost an entire lap. That's how good Senna is. If you want to show people how good Senna is, just that one clip from the race, that start. And there you go. That's how good Senna is in the wet. But this will not be the only Senna race we have on this countdown. There may
maybe another stellar race in this countdown alone. But it definitely won't be the last time we talk about Ayrton Senna in this top 100 countdown. Number three. Here we go. Huge accident at the start. Luciano Berti, Michael Schumacher, gone. It would be one of very few occasions where Michael Schumacher would fail to finish a race. This is back when Ferrari was a dominant team in the sport. Not much else can really be said at this point. And while Michael Schumacher was involved in that first lap incident, it would be his brother, Ralph Schumacher, that would come out on top with the race win on the day. Next up, number two. The 2000. Italian Grand Prix. One of the very first races I watched and how scary was that crash? How it happened? Well, conditions for the race were ideal. But Heifeld and his car being worked on by the mechanics. He managed to get to the side of the track before the formation lap to avoid a penalty. Schumacher maintaining his race lead at the start. Hacken in second, Barrichello third. Then heading into the first corner Mika Salo and Eddie Irvine making contact. Salo suffering a puncture. And Eddie Irvine retiring from the race. Going into the second chicane. All hell broke loose. We had Frenson colliding with Barrichello colliding with Trulli and colliding with Coulthard. Trulli losing his left rear tyre which ended up striking a fire marshal. Behind them De La Rosa colliding with Johnny Herbert and Johnny was sent airborne. No, it was De La Rosa that was sent airborne. Absolute chaos. Frenson, Barrichello, Trulli, Coulthard, a fire marshal, De La Rosa, and Johnny Herbert. Absolutely chaotic. But there's one more race start that we're yet to discuss. And we're just about to get into that one. But before that, I think it's time for a recap. But the honorable mention for this list was the 2018 Russian Grand Prix. The countdown as it is so far. Number 10, the 2002 Australian Grand Prix. Number 9, the 2003 German Grand Prix. Number 8, the 2007 European Grand Prix. Number 7, the 2003 Malaysian Grand Prix. Number 6, the 2001 Malaysian Grand Prix. Number 5, the 2005 Canadian Grand Prix. Number 4, the European Grand Prix of 1993. Number 3, the 2001 German Grand Prix. Number two, the 2000 Italian Grand Prix. 
those that know their F1 history will probably work out what the number one is. Here it is anyway. My number one race starts on the top. The year was 1998. McLaren were dominant. It was Belgium. And Belgium has a history of being unpredictable with its weather. But here, it was wet all the way to the finish. From start to finish, the weather wasn't the best. But my goodness me, the drama at the start was just the tip of the iceberg. Absolute chaos. David Coulthard losing control, heading round La Source, and ending up causing a multiple car pileup, causing the race to not only be red flagged, but also restarted. That was just the start of the drama for the race that day. That wouldn't be the only incident that David Coulthard would be involved in. David Coulthard slowing down to allow Michael Schumacher to head past. Then, <sighs> huge drama as Michael Schumacher crashed into the back of David Coulthard. Coulthard losing his rear wing in the process, both cars having to retire, Schumacher almost throwing fists at David Coulthard, but Coulthard amazingly managing to get back into the race after the damage on his car was repaired. After seeing this happen, Eddie Jordan boss of the Jordan team at the time, had to make a call. Should he allow his drivers to continue racing, or does he play safe, enable team orders to prevent any drama? He went for the latter option, and Damon Hill winning for the Jordan team. His teammate Ralph Schumacher in second. This race Chaotic, dramatic, exciting, and intense for some moments. But what this race will be remembered for, more than anything else, is that famous race start. The 1998 Belgian Grand Prix. My number one race start of all time. And there we go. That is our first list out of the way. Are there any moments that you think would be good for this list as well? Let me know in the comments, and by May, we do this for next season. The 2020 season, that is. Until then, join me next week for the top 10 pit stop blunders in Formula 1 history. And there are a lot of juicy competitors for this list. Until then, keep racing away and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye bye for now.